The difference between gifted and talented, I think, has been explained very well by Francois Gagné, the Emeritus Professor of Educational Psychology at the University of Quebec in Montreal. And he talks about giftedness as being um, the natural abilities that occur within the top 10% of the population, whereas talent he identifies as systematically developed skills, again occurring within the top 10% of the population. I think that teachers and schools are able to gather information about gifted students when they use a variety of instruments. So one test doesn't fit all and essentially it's about gathering data from a variety of settings and, and opportunities. It's about gathering um, group test information, but it might also be gathering information from parents and looking at how the student is going in the classroom. The most important thing in identifying gifted students is making sure that you get information and data from a variety of sources. Uh, the more information you gather, the better the picture you're going to get of the student and their needs. The most obvious place to start would be with an external report from a psychologist. Often schools, this may be the first thing they're presented with when they start talking about gifted education. Within a school, we gather data on students all the time, so we can use a lot of that in terms of identifying. Uh, you may have somebody within the school community um, who's able to do an intelligence test like a WISC or a WIAT, and those are a great place to start. We can also use the data that we gather from standardised testing, so the PAT testing. Um, NAPLAN's not always something that should be used standalone, but can be used within a body of evidence. Classroom observation, academic results, all of these things can indicate um, a child who is gifted or has high potential. At Carinda, the way that we identify students who are gifted in non-academic areas has two parts. So firstly, we have students that apply to be part of our excellence programs in non-academic areas. They provide portfolios of their work or they trial or audition for our non-academic, more sporting areas. The other side of it is that we have a ref referral process. So our staff identify talent in their elective areas and then refer them on to myself or one of our teaching and learning team. And then we go and observe the student to identify if it is something we can support and excel in. There's a lot of different ways that you can access professional development for teachers in the area of gifted education. Um, the importance of professional development is making sure that everybody has a good understanding and awareness of the needs of gifted students and all of the challenges around that, why they need to be um, supported both at school and in the world generally. <laughs>